as we take a few minutes now to look into the word of the Lord, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, reading from verse 28 down to verse 34. Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the greatest commandment of all? Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So the scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth. For there is one God, and there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. But after that, no one dared question him. Quite a familiar passage of scripture this is, a quotation taken from the Old Testament, and Jesus reaffirms it in the New Testament in several of the Gospels, uh, giving the commandment to love God with all our hearts, all our soul, our mind and strength, and to say that the, the next commandment is actually joined to this, and it is like this, it is to love one's neighbor and ourselves uh, as yourself. And Jesus says that everything else hangs on this commandment. It's not two, it's one commandment to love God and to love one another, and everything else, everything to do with the gospel hangs on these things. First, we see that loving God is everything. That is all the gospel is, responding to the love of God and, and, and loving him. There's no, nothing that pleases the heart of God more than loving him. And then the, the, Jesus goes on to say, you, you don't just know that loving me is everything. Everything hangs on loving him. It's also about loving me with everything, loving me with everything that is in you. Many times when we, we, we come together to worship God and we sing a song like, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice, sometimes we are filled with the, the emotion of love for the Lord. And we might think that that is what loving God is. But you know what? Singing a song like that, even with, with, with all that is within us, it's just, the ex, it's just an expression of our love to God. It's just putting out. But how we love God is, as, as Jesus said, with everything. We love him with our mind. We love him with our soul. We love him with our heart. We love him with our strength. We love him. We show our love to him with all that is within us. Not only is loving him everything, but we must love him with everything. Loving him is everything because you know, there's nothing else that God is so interested in. He's not looking for the little, you know, deeds of our lives or whether we are, we are fulfilling all these rituals. He's not looking to see, you know, whether we are ticking the clock, you know, and doing certain things and ticking them off. But he's, he's, he's saying that you must love me with everything. And I'm constantly amazed at how much, you know, we learn about God as our Father and that parent-child relationship from, and we see it mirrored in our own parent-child relationships, you know? Um, if you take any child, it's a normal thing for that child to love the parent. That's the norm. You, you have a child and they grew up loving you. But if you really think about, you know, why that child would love you and why, maybe why that child, sometimes there are instances where children don't respond in love to their parents, it's, it's, it's like this. The child loves the parent because the parent first loved the child. If you take a, a, a parent or a, a mother who has a baby in her womb, she begins to love that child even before that child is born. Even before she has seen the child, the mother and the father, will, their hearts will be filled with love for that child. So they love the child first before the child even knows of its own existence. And then when the child is born, they grow in love for the child. And it takes some time before the child understands, hey, these two people love me. I'm their world. And, and, it, and, and as time goes on, that child will respond to the love of the parent. And that's the same way that we respond to the love of God. See, God created us and he loved us before we were even there. And we didn't know of him. And then he found us and then we... we 
we realized his great love for us and we began to love him back. We loved him by responding to his love which was poured out upon our lives. But then you come uh, uh, across these uh, situations in our human relationships where you find children who do not love their parents back. And there, there are several reasons sometimes that could happen. And one of them is when a child has not experienced the love of that parent. Maybe they've had a rocky relationship or maybe the parent was absent or maybe there is some uh, big reason as to why this child did not experience the love of a parent so they cannot love them back. The other instance you find where a child does not love a parent back is when the child has forgotten what the parent has done for him. And sometimes as young people, we, we forget the things that parents have done. We forget the investment they have made. We forget that it was them who held our hand and taught us to walk. And as we grow up and we see their deficiencies or we see the things that, that, you know, don't sit well with us or we disagree on certain things, sometimes there's a distancing that comes and in some relationships where the child and the parent are totally estranged and, and the fault there is not that the parent hasn't done their job well or they haven't loved their child, but it's that the child has forgotten that they, that they, they, they had parents who invested in them. They have forgotten what the parent has done. And that's how it is for some of us uh, believers or Christians who don't love God with all our heart. It's not because God made mistakes with us or he dealt us with a tough hand or anything like that, but sometimes it's number one because we, we have not come into that relationship with God in the first place. We have not encountered him in the first place. We have not become his child by accepting his gift of salvation, so to speak. So we haven't experienced that love as yet in a deep and personal way. So we cannot respond in love to God. So it's like the, 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 the child that didn't experience a love with a parent as yet. When you walk, when you have not come to the foot of the cross ever in your life and you have not ever, you know, personally experienced the love of God, you cannot love him with all your heart until you come and build a relationship with him and know him. But sometimes as Christians and as believers who once knew God, we don't love him with all our heart because we have forgotten how he loved us. We have forgotten the things that he has done for us. We have forgotten that, that he lifted us up out of the miry clay and set our feet on solid rock. You know, sometimes God has done amazing things in our life. Sometimes we have gone through really, really bad times when we have just hung on to the grace of God and he's the only one who has lifted us up. And those have been desperate times. I know I have experienced so many of those in my life. And even as I have interacted with each and every one of you, I know many of you have gone through times like that where if not for the grace of God, you don't know how you could have got through that season in your life. But sadly, as human beings, when time goes on sometimes, we forget how desperate we were. We forget how, how barren that period was. We forget how terrible that season was. And we forget that God was good through it all. We, for, we forget how he lifted us, how he held us, how he took us through those fiery furnaces and walked us through the raging waters. We forget his goodness in our lives. And if we forget the goodness in our lives, we can't love God. We can't love God because we've forgotten how he loved us. And I believe as his people this morning, as we leave behind one year and go into another, God is just calling us very simply as his people, love me. Remember that loving me is everything. It's not about what you do. It's not about what you think. It's about, do you love me? And the reason that God wants us to love him, love him and know that loving him is everything is because the kind of love that he's talking about is a love that gives everything and it does everything and a love that, the love that we love him with everything. And that's why it says that we must love him with our strength and we must love him with our mind and we must love him with our soul and we must love him with all that is within us. It's because this love that, that the Lord is demanding from us is, is not just the words of a love song. It's not just attendance in church on Sunday, but it's actually very, very hard to love God in the way that he wants us to love him. Because when we say that we love God and when we say, God, I love you, and God says, love me with everything, love me with all that you are, it means that you're going to have to lay down your life in love for the Lord. 
it means that as a, as a person who walks with God and, and professes to love him, life is going to be really hard because the way that God asks us to walk is very hard. It, it, and, it, and it starts at all levels, you know, where every time, every time you do something, every time you think something, you have to ask, is this, is this a way that I can love God? Is what I'm doing right now, what I'm thinking right now, or where I'm going right now an expression of my love for God? And it starts with the very simple things where we have the children also in the service today because there's no Sunday school. So I'm going to talk to them too. It, 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 it begins with when your sister hits you and you want to hit her back. You don't hit her back because that's not loving Jesus. And it goes on through every st stage of your life where in, in, in your school, you don't ignore the children who are left out by others because that's not loving Jesus. And it goes to your working life and you don't undercut people at the office or you don't steal things from your office or you don't do things in your office which displease God because that's not loving Jesus. And one of the areas that God's really been speaking to me and, and impressing upon my heart that, that as a church we must love people is in, in the area of releasing forgiveness to those who don't deserve it. I'm not aware, but I believe that the Lord is saying there are many situations that people are walking through. And as God's people who are coming to church every Sunday and hearing his word and who open his word every morning and look at what he has to say, uh, I believe the Lord is saying to many of you, there are situations in your life which no one may know about, but you have to release forgiveness because that's loving Jesus. That's loving him with your mind because, see, your mind tells you, don't do it. If you do it, they will do something to you again, or you will get hurt. But when you love God with your mind, you release your mind, and you, you just love Jesus. And when you love Jesus, the practical way that it, 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 it outworks is loving people. You can't love God without loving people. See, it's very easy to love God because he never does anything bad. He never does anything to hurt us. He never sins. He doesn't talk behind our back. He doesn't do anything bad to us. He never turns his face away. He's always there. He never is busy. He never doesn't reply your text message when you send one. He's always there. But the problem is, in, is that loving people is so hard because people are so imperfect. And even the good Christians are imperfect. And even the good Christians who come to church every Sunday or who lead worship or whatever do so many things which, which are not intentional or hypocritical wrong things, but they are just the part of our human nature where we are struggling to obey God and struggling to love Him. But you can't say you love God without loving His people because God says the commandment is one. If you love me, You've got to have a heart of love and compassion for my people. And that's how God tests our love for him, by putting all these difficult situations in front of us and giving us the grace to draw on him and love people with the love of God. See, it's not human nature to love those who hurt us. It's not human nature to love certain types of people or, or people with certain irritating qualities. And sometimes you'll find these irritations most of all where? In your home, <laughs> among your family members. And that's where the Lord wants us to lay down our pride sometimes. That's where the Lord wants us to give in sometimes. That's where the Lord wants us to extend a hand It's easier to do it outside. It's easier to just do a good deed and then go back home. But it's much harder to love God with everything in our home and every day, all the time. But it's a constant process of listening to God and being willing to obey Him. And it's amazing how simple it really becomes the minute you say the Lord, to the Lord, if you, if you want me to do this, I will. And in the times that you take those steps of obedience to God, of loving God and showing his love to people, you see how the grace of God just flows through your life in an unbelievable way. Try apologizing to your spouse over something you haven't done. Try taking the first step to reconcile in a family feud. Those are the areas that we find hard because our pride rises up within us. 
But Jesus is here saying to us, this is how you love me. This is how you love me. And I pray that as we walk into this new year, God will help us to be people of love. Don't think that love is just going and feeding a bunch of kids at an orphanage. That's good, and we must do that as God's people. We must share what we have with those who don't have. But God's love is in the simple things too, like not insisting you are right in every situation, even though you may be. God's love is in the simple things like complimenting someone on something or encouraging a person, even though they may not have done 100% and, and you, you know others who could have done it better. It's still seeing the heart of a person and appreciating that. Love is in the simple things like laying down something that you want for the sake of giving in to someone else and what they want. And as God's people, I believe, we, we have to work on that area. We need to work on that area of loving one another, even in the body of Christ. Not being quick to take offense. Not being quick to defend ourselves. Not being quick to assume that someone is ignoring me or leaving me out of something. But being quick to include. Being quick to speak to new people. Being quick to give a hug to someone. Being quick to, to include them even in our own family gatherings or things like that. Simple ways of showing the love of God and of loving God with everything that is within us. As parents all day long, we're trying to teach our children things. We send them to school for them to learn. We send them to classes for them to learn various things. But many times I sit down and think, okay, they are learning to read, they are learning to write, they are learning their mathematics and all that. But what's the most important thing that I as a parent have to teach them and to ensure that they know? It's loving Jesus. If they love Jesus, and I'm telling this to, to especially to parents who have teenage kids because I, I believe you need the most prayer because you're walking through the hardest, <laughs> hardest season of your life. And I dread to think how it will be in, you know, 10 years when we are facing those situations. But instead of focusing on teaching them so many things, if we teach them to love Jesus, then they will want to please the heart of Jesus. They will want to follow God's will for their life. They will not want to do things or say things or go to places that do not please the heart of God. If they love God, they won't do it. Just think of how you love your parents and you do certain things to please them. Even sacrificing your own wants or desires. And if we can do it for human parents, how much more should we do it for the father of all? The one who saved our souls. If we truly are people who love him with all that is within us, then we will always be on the right track with him. We will always seek his way. We will always do what he wants us to do. We will minimize the messes of our lives because we will be seeking him. And it's very, very simple in, in nearly every situation to just ask the Lord, what, what, what do you want me to do? And more often than not, you have your answer. You may not always like it. But loving Jesus is simple in that sense. Let's be parents who teach our children to love Jesus above all. Let's at every chance we get, brainwash them. Loving Jesus is the most important thing. Loving Jesus is the most important thing. I believe that with all my heart. Because if we love him, we will obey him. Isn't that his what his word says? Those who love me keep my commandments. So if we teach our children, if we teach our young people to love Jesus, to be in love with Jesus, they will be desperate to please him. They will be desperate to seek him. They will want to follow his way. And as God's people here this morning... If there are areas in our lives where we are not pleasing God or we can see even this morning that we are not 
you know, loving God in that area. Perhaps it's because we've forgotten uh, that, the, that Jesus loved us first. Perhaps it's because we've forgotten what he has done for us, just like the kid who has forgotten what the parent did. Maybe we need to remind ourselves of where we were when Jesus found us and picked us up. And what about all those messes from which he delivered us? What about all those dangers which we didn't even know we were facing, but his angels were surrounding us and he saved us from them? Some of us could have been dead except for the grace of God and his hand of protection upon our lives. Let's be people who, who know that loving him is everything. And let's be people who love him with all that is within us. Thank you.